All right. Hello, everyone. This is Mr. Crozier. I'm going to go over today's notes again in case you didn't get it quite done in class. Um, we are starting Unit 3, which is Advanced Derivatives. So here we go. We, first, we need to know some basic derivative rules. If we have a function, we take the derivative, and we are taking the derivative with respect to x. How is this function changing with respect to x? Well, uh, we don't have the function here, so the notation is simply f of x prime. That's our notation for we've taken the derivative. All right, on the next one, well, we have two functions being added together, and if I take the derivative of those, it is very simple. We just take the derivatives individually. And we can go on with life, and we have our answer. Now, if this is a plus, it also works for subtraction, so you can do addition or subtraction individually. The problem comes in when we try and do a multiplication problem. Well, you can't do them individually. You have to do our product rule, left function, whoops, which is just f of x, left d right plus right function d left. And that's how we get the derivative of a product. When we do a quotient, we have to do low function d high minus high function d low. Oops, that is g of x right there. All over g of x squared. Low d high minus high d low all over low squared. Now the next one is a composite function. We have a function inside of a function. Well, that's the chain rule. That is f of g of x with the derivative. Now we take the derivative of the inside and we multiply them. So this is the chain rule. So that helps us do this problem right here. The derivative of tangent is secant squared, and I leave this alone. So now I've taken the derivative of tangent of something, but then we always follow it up by multiplying it by the chain rule. Because if you, if you look in the first page of the book, when you take the derivative of tangent of u, it becomes secant of u with a chain rule added on. So we always have to remember the chain rule. If this inner term is not x, we're going to have to account for it. Now if we just had tangent of x, and we go to take the derivative, that would be secant squared, whoops, secant squared of x times, what's the derivative of x? Just 1. So it's not necessary. It's not necessary to put a 1 here but it is necessary up here. All right, let's look at a double chain rule problem. Well, this is cosine to the eighth power. Well, what I can do there is I bring down the eight, just like the power rule. Um, that would be eight x to the seventh. So this is eight cosine of two x plus one to the seventh. However, now I have to do the chain rule. So the derivative of cosine is a negative sine, and there's that. But wait a minute, we have to go one more time because this is inside the sine function. So we have to multiply it by 2. So that's why we have the chain rule because it's power and we just keep going down. We take this, we do the power rule, we get this, and then we take this. Now we don't have to go any further with this because this is not a composite function. There's nothing inside of 2. All right. Um, but how do we, let's go back up here, we have one more. How do we take the derivative with respect to x when it's a y here? Well, we can take the derivative as normal, but then we're going to multiply the chain rule, and the chain rule is dy dx. So we always have to account for this. So now in this problem here, um, if I take the derivative with respect to x, this is 6x plus 8y times dy dx. Can't, can't forget this one. This one it doesn't matter because if I take d dx of x, I have dx over dx, which again is just 1. It's the same one that's right there. Um, and then how do I do this? Well, product. There's my left function, there's my right. Left, d right, plus right d left. Derivative here is 1. To 
derivative here is 1 with a dy dx. Now I'm going to rewrite this because I, I prefer to write it like this as y prime plus 4x times y prime again plus uh, 4y equals dy dx. Oops, let's change that dy dx to a y prime. Now I have a lot going on here, but if you, if you notice that here's my three variables. They're all the same, so I want to solve for this. So I'm going to leave this term on this side, so I'm going to do y prime times 8y. Leave this one here, y prime times 4x. Subtract this one over, minus y prime equals, well, this guy and this term, these two terms have to go over here, so that's negative 6x minus 4y. And what else can I do here? Well, all of these terms have a y prime, so y prime is 8y plus 4x minus 1 is equal to negative 6x minus 4y. So y prime is equal to negative 6x minus 4y divided by 8y plus 4x minus 1. Very messy. A lot more moving pieces. Up, up here the derivative is just secant squared. Here a lot more pieces, but the same steps still apply on every problem. Get all your y primes. Here's my y primes. Get them all on the same side. Factor them all out. And then divide this large expression over that way. All right, hope this gets you started on unit three.